As the weather on Earth cools down, just be grateful that we're not in the Boomerang Nebula. At 1 Kelvin, a single degree above absolute zero, this cloud of dust and gas is the coldest object in the universe. I'm Sophie, and welcome to The Countdown. Although the nebula is 5,000 light years away from Earth, astronomers managed to snap a high-resolution image using an array of radio telescopes called ALMA. The new information will reveal more about the Chile Nebula's development, and it could shed some light on how stars become nebulae in the first place. If an asteroid was hurtling towards us right now, we probably wouldn't know about it. The fact is, we don't have a planet-wide warning system for space rocks, like the meteor that exploded over Russia earlier this year. Hopefully, a new plan from the United Nations will change that. Last week, the UN agreed to a set of recommendations from the Association of Space Explorers, which aims to neutralize any asteroid threats. First, the UN will establish an international asteroid warning group so each country can alert her fellows about incoming space rocks. If the group detects a true threat, another UN committee will arrange to deflect the rock from its target years before it's due to hit Earth. Of course, predicting an asteroid strike is still a tricky business. But along with the UN's actions, other groups are planning to launch new telescopes to scan the skies for potential dangers. Still, asteroid strikes aren't all bad. Scientists have long suspected they delivered water to Earth. The only thing they didn't know was when the damp rocks arrived, until now. Researchers examined a meteorite that reached Earth 13 years ago and found it was relatively dry when it landed on the planet. In fact, they think any water it once had probably disappeared back when the solar system was forming, which means asteroids reaching Earth 3.8 to 4.1 billion years ago, hundreds of millions of years after the solar system formed, were probably just as dry as the meteorite we recently found. According to the scientists, asteroids carried water to Earth even earlier in our history, about 4.6 billion years ago. They probably brought organic molecules as well, delivering the raw materials that would eventually develop into life. The sun has been partying hard since last week. Between October 23rd and 28th, it emitted 18 solar flares, the first significant flare since June. Three of the outbursts were in the X-Class, which is the most intense category. This type of flare can damage or shut down radio communications for short periods of time. And on top of the solar flares, astronomers have observed several coronal mass ejections, which spew billions of tons of particles out of the sun. Although Earth's atmosphere protects us from these particles, it can't shield electronic systems. The particles can still affect electronics in orbit and on the ground. If you balance our solar system on an enormous table, it will lie relatively flat, as all the planets orbit in line with the sun's equator. But thousands of light years away, scientists have observed a solar system that's way off kilter. The planets called hot Jupiters often orbit their host stars at a tilted angle. However, the star Kepler-56 is the first system where multiple planets are askew. What's pushing two of the planets into slanted paths? The culprit may be the third planet in the system. Only discovered recently, this large planet could have shoved its fellows into their tilted orbits. Interference from another large body might also explain why hot Jupiters get out of line. And that's your countdown. Links to all of these stories are in the description below. Also, don't forget to visit the Space Lab channel on YouTube and subscribe. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick. And this Halloween, I'll be partying with the spiders from Mars. Get it? Like the David Bowie song. I need a different costume. Became the special man Then we will sing his band Sing him really sad Screwed up eyes And screwed down hair